What is up guys? Welcome back to another video of Sergey's and mine. And I know we haven't really come out with a video in a while just because Sergey and I have been busy and we've been hanging out with friends and you know work gets in the way as well. But today I'm finally going to be ready to join my case halves for my EJ engine together. I'm going to slap in the crank. I'm going to slap in the bearings. I've measured everything already like four or five times to make sure everything is in spec. But other than that, yeah, it should be a pretty quick process. All I have to do is put in the crank, put in the bearings, and then put our TV uh, on the case halves themselves and then join it together and actually slap all the bolts in and then torque them down. And as you can see, I've got everything laid down. I've got all my bolts laid out. I've got all my pistons, my piston rings, and my bearings as long as... as ugh, as well as my crank over here with the... Uh, rods installed and torqued down but yeah first thing i'm gonna have to do is actually clean the case halves uh that way we can start joining them joining them together so uh let's start and do that so here's my actual crank you can see right there with all the rods installed the bearings uh and the assembly lube i like to use the uh torco let me see if this focuses the Torco engine assembly lube just because it actually it doesn't dry out like any of the other ones would I've heard really good things about it and one more like keynote for the crank I guess uh, with all the rods like this is the stock crank with aftermarket Eagle rods uh, stock size of course but with the rods you get an instru instruction manual and you can see all the bolt, the bolts, uh, the 3 8 ARP 2000s bolts, and the uh, stretch limit on these, and the torque uh, limit on these as well. You want to make sure that you don't want to go above or below these, and you want to really measure uh, your bolt stretch on all of them as well. Um, and then, you know, kind of record what your bolts started out with when you took, when you first got them, like brand new and then after you've used them a couple times as well and there's like clearances for everything for the actual crank so yeah <laughs> that's funny all right first things first you're gonna want to grab a clean rag uh flip your case halves up upside down to the you know where you're actually gonna join them together grab a thing of brake clean spray it on the on the rag on the clean rag you don't want to use a dirty rag otherwise your engine goes uh kaboom you know and then wipe off like the surface that's actually gonna be joined together. And this goes, you know, for the bearing, uh, bearing surfaces where they're gonna be uh, set. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is actually putting the bearings and all of the grooves in here. And you're gonna wanna wear gloves to do this just because, you know, you don't get any of your greasy hands on the bearing surfaces or on the block case half surfaces so i'm going to put on a set of gloves and i'm going to start with the bearings here because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to break out the lube that's right so when it comes to the bearings there each of them has a little notch on it and the case halves also have a notch so lining them up is not hard at all it's just make sure that the bearing surfaces the notch is aligned to the notch on the uh, case half itself or the short block some would say uh, but yeah just want to make sure that you insert it with the notch first so the notch to the notch on here you stick it in and then you kind of put in the other end without a notch in here and then press it in until it is like flush so the bearing surface is flush with the block surface you don't want like a little groove sticking up otherwise you know the bearing might not seat correctly and it might be either like too tight or too uh, loose for your crank so we're going to do the other side on this half as well put the notch to the notch in here and then slide this bad boy in here. What the hell is going on? Oh, I'm putting it on the wrong part. Just putting it in the front and this bearing belongs in the rear.
You also want to make sure that you don't bend these bearings in any way because if you bend them, you're going to have to get a brand new set of bearings because your crank is not going to slide on here at all or spin on here. It's probably going to damage the crank. And then you're going to get a spun uh, crank bearing, which is probably the worst thing you can do to your car. So I got my bearings in here, as you can see, like right there. Let's see, let it focus the tang, lined up with the tang right here. Uh, it doesn't have one on that side, uh, just because it only has it on one side to make it easier. Same here, same here, same here, and same on this big one right there. So yeah, after we get, well, yeah, we got, now that we got this done, we're going to clean off the surfaces one last time just to make sure that they're perfect and then we're going to put some assembly lube on all the bearing surfaces. Alright, now that we got all the bearing surfaces cleaned and all the block surfaces cleaned, I'm going to start putting on the Torco engine assembly lube on every single bearing on here. That way uh, to make sure that when we actually slap the crank on uh, it'll spin freely and then we can move it around, you know, for first engine start as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is torque down the rod bolts one more foot pounds just to make sure, you know, on the safe side to make sure that they're tight and uh, stretched properly. So I'm going to take my torque wrench and then it said 43 foot pounds for the Eagle on the Eagle manual or the Eagle rods manual. So now what you're want, going to want to do is take each of the jur uh, bearing journals that are on the crank and you're going to want to clean them uh, with brake cleaner to make sure to get all the debris off of there. That way when you set it down, you'll know that uh, there's no debris between the actual journal and the actual bearing. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is putting RTV all along the edges of this case half. This is the passenger side cylinder one and three, and we're going to be following a very uh, a certain procedure for this where the silicone goes is very important as well as not laying it down too thick. If you lay it down too thick, you are going to clog these oil passages and these coolant and the oil passages over here as well. Let me uh, pretty much show you where it all goes. I'm going to put the camera as close as I can. That way um, you can see kind of where it's supposed to go or exactly where it's supposed to go. And then we have to install all the O-rings for the uh, oil and coolant passages. So yeah, let's get started on that. <music>
So now the next thing that we're going to be doing is throwing in our case half bolts, all of them, and then we have to tighten them down in a very specific sequence. So I'm going to start uh, working on the left side, and then I'll flip it upside down once I got the left side tightened, and then I'll, I'll do the right side, and you have to do the outers as well. So let me throw these in real quick. So I finally got my short block assembled after all that. I got uh, the crank, the bearings, uh, the rods in there and everything else. I have not done the pistons yet just because I don't really want to tonight. It's already kind of late so I think I'm going to save that for another day. Uh, but other than that, I was able to meet the case halves together with the RTV in there and then uh, torque everything to spec. And then I also got the rear main seal in and I got the head uh, alignment studs in there. Let me show you real quick here. So this is my block or short block all together. Uh, as you can see, I put just the right amount of RTV on here that it actually like just barely squeezed it out on the block and that's what you want you don't want a whole lot of it out if you have if you see when you join your case halves together if you see that you have like a shit ton of it coming off the top then uh rtv probably got in your uh oil uh where your oil flows uh, in your bearings so you might want to rip your block apart and uh restart but yeah other than that you can also see that I have just the pistons or the rods, sorry, laying in there. Uh, and I will be throwing the pistons in there probably tomorrow or the next day. I'd probably say Friday. Uh, and the rear main seal as well. Oh, and if you guys don't have a real rear main seal, uh, like the tool to install it on there, you know, like the little cap that goes over and then you have to hammer it. What I used, or what I was able to use, is my uh, Wysco 99.5mm uh, uh, piston ring compressor. It goes over it, actually, like, pretty, pretty well right there, as you can see. And then you could just hammer the edges of it until that uh, seal, that rear main seal seats in there. So yeah, the only thing I have left are the pistons. I have to file the piston rings. I have to put the oil pump on and I have to put the ARP head studs on as well. But other than that, that is pretty much it for this video. That is pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, I got everything together and hopefully I'll be assembling the entire block like sometime this week or next week. I really wanna get it done, but other than, other than that, thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, Sergey and I will try to answer them as best as we can. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the short block build, uh, reach out to me, uh, leave a comment in one of the videos about it, and I'm pretty good at answering, so I'll get back to you like pretty much the next day. Again, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.